So many of you guys have seen this. So as we all. So this right here is the angle sum identity for sine, but that's only when we have two things inside, namely x plus y. Hmm. I wonder what if we have three things though. Sine of x plus y plus c. What will that be? Well, I'll tell you the answer is actually very nice. So let me write it down for you guys right away. Right here, what we'll do is we keep the sine of the first, so sine x, and then for the y and z, you just make them cosine. So you have cosine y, cosine z. And then you pretty much do the same thing for the next one. You have sine for the y, and then for x and z, they have the cosine. So this is cosine x, sine y, and then cosine z. And then we do the same thing. But you do sine of z and then cosine of the first two. Cosine x, cosine y, and then sine z. And you think we are done? No. Here at the end, we are going to subtract sine x, sine y, and sine z, which is very nice. And I know, you are thinking, what if we have four of them? Boy, the answer is not so nice. You guys can take a look right here. But anyways, I wanted to show you guys why this is true. So here is a quick proof for it. Here we go. The way that we're going to do it is we can look at this as sine of the first two and then plus the third one. So this is just the one and this is the second one. So this is sine of x plus y. And then this is the second one. So we do sine of the first times cosine of the second. Just like exactly what we did right here. And then we add cosine of the first, which is x plus y now, and then times sine of the second. Have a look. Here, we have to use the original version, and we also have to use the cosine version. But it's okay, we can do it. This right here is just going to be, I'll write it down, sine x cosine y plus cosine x sine y and then we multiply that by cosine z and then for cosine remember even though it's an adding in between it's going to be a subtraction so this will give us cosine x cosine y and then subtract and then sine x sine y and then times sine z and this is how we get the minus right here. And now we just have to distribute it and things will work out very nicely. Multiplying cosine z into here, we get the first one, sine x cosine y cosine z. And then plus cosine x sine y cosine z. And then distribute this, we get plus cosine x cosine y sine z and then lastly subtract so i will just put this down subtract sine x sine y sine z and there we have it this is the identity when we have three things in cos in sine very nice huh